Well, hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode. I'm super happy today because I have here a returning guest, <laughs> friend of mine, Stefania Ochoa. She's joining me all the way from Mexico. She's right now on, on a little trip down there, and she makes some time for us to talk about all things NFT, to talk about the things that she's doing with Soyo Magazine. It's kind of pretty much a follow-up conversation on what she's up to. And I'm really excited because I've been following Stefania for a while since we had that conversation, I don't know how many months ago, maybe six or more months ago. And uh, all the new things that she's doing seem very exciting for me. And I think they will be also very excited for you guys to listen to. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be a great chat. Well, Stefania, ¿cómo estás? Uh, maravillosa, feliz, un poquito cansada de estar <laughs> viajando tanto, pero es good. <laughs> Awesome. Super happy to have you back, Stefania. You are no stranger to, to us here in my community. And uh, what a great uh, chance to now have an opportunity to chat with you. Thank you for making space. I know today has been super busy for you. You had some meetings and uh, you're also down in Mexico having a great time. And I think you were hiking yesterday or something. So uh, I know uh, you're probably a bit tired, but uh, thank you for making the time for me and for our friends here as well. Uh, those who are listening to the podcast or those who are watching, uh, you know, this uh, through YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or whatever our friends are at. And I really want to talk to you because, and here's the, here's the big because, right? And I don't even know where this conversation is going to go, <laughs> like in which direction, because I think, you know, the world we, which we live today creatively and, and also in many other aspects, technology is, uh, is going in it's moving fast and it's bringing a lot of new opportunities it's bringing also a lot of new terrains to go into and maybe some uh, even places that we have never been before you know also contemplating new ways of working new ways of accessing information and for artists new ways of creating new ways of making our creations available to people and for collectors new ways of collecting and new ways of of uh, connecting with artists so there's like a lot of new in the space and I remember since we uh, had a chat, uh, you know, some time ago, uh, and we talked about your projects and you were doing some curatorial projects and you were also doing uh, some art consulting and you had Soyo Magazine, which you were in the middle of changing and so on. And then ever since, you know, you have gone really full fledged, full force into NFT space as well. Uh, you've been, uh, you know, doing conferences and workshops and doing all kinds of really, really interesting stuff that I don't even have a title for you on what to call you, but uh, uh, on the NFT space, you're known as <laughs> NFT mommy, <laughs> NFT mommy. So that's your new uh, yeah. kind of identity in this new world, this new reality. So I'm really super excited because I want to uh, kind of follow up on that chat. And uh, maybe you can take us a little bit on that journey that you've been into and what makes you excited about it? Uh, because you seem very excited about it when you talk about it, when you do your, you know, your also your social media posts and when you do your videos. And uh, also you're an NFT collector. So I would love to, you know, to hear a little bit of, about that. And one last thing, you know, you want, if that wasn't enough, we had a chance to meet in person. You made a visit to Chicago yeah. and you uh, DM me and say, I'm in Chicago. So you came to visit my gallery and we had a great, great time with great chat. And so I feel now I know you even better. So, and uh, we're both Ochoas. So we might be cousins of, at some point or somewhere. <laughs> so how's that for an introduction, Stefania? <laughs> that is quite the introduction. And uh, well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me back here and thinking about me as um, you also delve into this um, space. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll give you like a, a, a very quick gist summary of how how this year com NFTs completely changed my life. Um, yeah. So I believe like when we first started talking uh, because we were connected through TikTok, TikTok I, was, I was still working in the traditional art space, um, but it was, it, and, and, but everything around like the world in the, in the art space and everyone was talking about NFTs and all this. And yeah. I was like, kind of like turning a cold shoulder to it saying like, ugh, not something else. Like this is just a fad. It's not going to yeah. stick. Um, digital art isn't real. Like <laughs> this like super negative um, <laughs> idea about it. Right. But it's because I didn't know. And I think that that's what happens a lot in the space is like mm -hmm. people fear what they don't know. And because they already come with that sort of stigma about it, they don't do the research. Exactly. So um, it just kept popping up in my world. And actually the gallery I was working with or is still working with is BG Gallery in Santa Monica. 
um, they were onboarding artists. We were onboarding artists to NFTs. And so I was in some of those meetings and um, some of my friends were reaching out to me who were doing really well, like on Clubhouse and um, getting Twitter following and things like that, talking about NFTs. And I was like, okay, there, there might be something here. Like some people I trust are genuinely interested. Yeah. Um, so I did more research and I knew that like, in order even for me to teach people, if I was going to like say it or stand behind something like that, I needed to understand. Mm-hmm. So I actually did, did a lot of research, just like Googling, watching a bunch of YouTube videos. I was very confused for a very long time. And like, yes, it's an NFT is a non-fundable token, but like, what does fundability even mean? And like, mm-hmm. why is it a token? It's art, you know, it's like, is it just art or other things NFTs? Like where, where does this rabbit hole go? Right. Mm-hmm. And it's a very, very deep rabbit hole. Uh, once uh, you start doing the research, there's so many different things you can do with NFTs because essentially it's just technology. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I understood like what blockchain did and what the NFT technology on top of blockchain did, it really broadened my horizons in terms of appreciating um, how it could change uh, the creator economy and artists' lives. Um, And I'll give just a very brief example of like what really clicked for me. It was the fact that an artist could essentially get rid of the gatekeeper or the middleman. Um, and it made total sense to me because I don't come from like an academic art background. I come from like, I want to disrupt this space. What can we do to disrupt it? And this technology really solved that one. You could get rid of middlemen who like, for example, an auction house, right? An yeah. auction house, it's a lot of fees when you go into auction. So what if you were able to just do you know hire a PR team hire like your galleries and stuff like that and have like a clear defined budget of how to go about um, maybe an auction that's open to your collector base mm-hmm. right so you could eliminate those sort of middlemen um, but even beyond that once um you once like your nft is out in the world or it's collected mm-hmm. you, once your collector decides to resell it you also have the ability to get royalties for your entire life and for as long as that piece gets resold because of the code and the technology within the NFT. Mm-hmm. Um, so that in itself is phenomenal. Also, there is just like so much potential because it is essentially just like functions of code saying if this, then that, mm-hmm. that you can literally do just, just so much Um, with it. So I'll give some more examples. So like, for example, you could somehow add like a, like a, a a warranty or some sort of like insurance, like maybe like what happens if my house burns down? Can I go back to the artist and be like, Hey, for the small fee, would you recreate it? Cause I'm actually the owner. Um, little things like that, that make like real use cases and and true certificates of authenticity for these art pieces. And that's another thing, right? We're able to track provenance where it's like now sometimes it's super hard to track that with like secondary market pieces. Um, and, and, um, yeah, so, um, there's so much that just like really, um, opened my eyes to the potential because also another thing about NFTs, it doesn't have to be a digital piece of work. It could be a, this piece of work right here, and it could just have what's called a hash function that is um, claiming that this piece is the same piece as the NFT. Um, and all it's doing is is also interacting with like smart contracts on blockchain saying that like, okay, it's swapping hands. And maybe that means that this digital piece is also swapping hands, but the transactions are happening on blockchain. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really like that for like the record keeping aspect, the creator incentives um, within it and just how disruptive it is because of what you can do with code and Mm -hmm. um, technology. Um, So yeah, went down that rabbit hole. Um, realized that there was huge potential there. And I actually, I think because of my research, like my social media algorithms just like changed. So (laughs) I was like scrolling through TikTok and I saw this TikTok video um, by this young lady. Her name is, she goes by Liz... Liz legendary or legendary, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And she was talking about this program called kernel. She was like, Hey, if you're a woman interested in learning more about blockchain, you should apply. There's an eight week fellowship program and women can come and uh, learn for free. 
And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Started looking at the application. I was like, oh, 250 people from all over the world are accepted, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, let's just give it a shot. There's no way I'm going to get in. Um, I applied, uh, applied for the scholarship. And a few days later, found out, I was like, okay, you're in. Now come take part in this. And actually, um, the kickoff started when I got to, when I started my road trip on my way to come visit you. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Cause they started from Ohio and then we drove all the way down to Arizona. So that's why we stopped in Chicago yeah. and all these different States. Um, so, and, and at that point I was still very much like new and learning very green in the space. So I, I think I was just excited about it, but I didn't know how to explain it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so the eight week program I became pretty involved with, but I was also working full time for the startup. So I had to like kind of sneak out of work to go show up <laughs> to these meetings. And eventually like my job caught up to me and they were like, Hey, where are you disappearing to? Like, what's going on? And I was like, oh, yeah. shit. like, and then that's where I was like, okay, I need to figure out how to quit my job and get into the space full time because wow. this is, this is like seriously going to change the world. Yeah. Um, and then I realized like, this is like, one of those like once in a lifetime opportunities that maybe like I I could I could grasp onto, especially with uh, considering like how much the growth of Bitcoin and Ethereum has uh, mm-hmm. has multiplied since their initial start, right? right. Um, so. Yeah, I was uh, looking for my place in, in this ecosystem and this space because I was like, hey, well, I don't know anything. So who's going to hire me? Right. Um, so I was like, OK, well, then I'll just do more research, figure out how to get involved, um, maybe join a few groups and see if if I could just learn. And then from there, maybe I'll be qualified for something. Right. Um, one thing led to another. And I was like just in a position of like. I just needed like a break from like what I was doing and also um, kind of realign myself with my true purpose because I felt like at the time I was just kind of lost. Mm -hmm. Um, And art has always called me, even finance has always called me Mm -hmm. and teaching financial literacy has been something that I've also been passionate about um, just because I myself come from like immigrant parents and I'm first generation American and financial literacy isn't something that is necessarily right. taught early on. Right. Um, but then I, that's also kind of one of the reasons I got into art. So I was like, well, there's right. a lot of money being passed around in this space. Like I right. want to know like why the 1% is into this. Right. And right, so right. finance art created actually NFTs, which were like, the perfect like sort of crossroad of like what NFTs are. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, holy shit. Yeah, this is what I have to do. Um, anyway, one thing led to another. Um, I actually took like a month. I, I actually, I was on Twitter, <laughs> found out about this other program, which was this residency saying like, Hey, we want to help creators come and find like, find find time to focus on something. Right. And so I was like, huh, I really need to figure out what I'm going to do with Soyo. And I need to figure out how I'm going to either implement like a better art consulting through that. If we're still going to be a magazine Mm -hmm. and what's going to happen, because I was like, I'm paying for, for this domain to live. And, um, I don't really have time for all this content sometimes. And also I don't want to be the only owner and I don't want to be like a boss to people. I need to figure out how to like make this work. (laughs) Um, so I applied for this residency actually in Texas And it was to live on a 28 acre ranch with three other strangers for a month, all expenses paid. I just had to get myself there and and back. And and by the way, I I remember your uh, Instagram story. I'm going. (laughs) I think you had (laughs) something. (laughs) Yeah. And it was, it was. It was crazy and it was so random. And I also, I think I had like, it was just starting to date my boyfriend too. And so he was like visiting me for that period. And I was like, Hey, I think I'm actually leaving for a month because I had applied to this program and um, I got in, I got yeah. in, I was a part of the first cohort to live with three other strangers who are now dear friends and a great confidants in my life. Um, yeah. And it was truly life-changing, like just being there, being around three other people who were also creating and just as passionate about their, um, their endeavors, I think really created like a, a a space of manifestation for all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was like, it was almost like everything we wanted to do. We just kind of did. 
and we had each other to like sort of bounce ideas off of things like that right Mm -hmm. uh and then some of us were more educated on blockchain than others so there was that sort of like ability to exchange knowledge Mm -hmm. um which was really great and my project focus there was creating like a a community of communities in a way but it was also around like nfts and figuring out how to do that Mm -hmm. um and through actually the kernel program which is that fellowship program that i had applied for initially a group of us sort of started ideating the idea of a non-fungible magazine, like an NFT magazine. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just sort of an idea. We were all just sort of like new, to the, not new to the space, but new to like, how can we figure out to, how, how can we incorporate media into this new space, this decentralized space? Um, because when you think about media, it is very much centralized, right? It comes from right. an editor and then you have your, mm-hmm. your contributors, you have people right. saying yes and no, what, what goes into that. Right? Right. right. So we were trying to figure out like a balance between that mm-hmm. and eight weeks just wasn't long enough for us to do that. Mm-hmm. So, and also everyone's busy, has jobs, so much going on. So the project kind of fizzled, but I really wanted to figure out like what that meant and mm-hmm. how we could take that to the next level. And also with like my zine background um, and experience in launching a magazine back in 2017, I like really wanted to figure out how to bring those two things together. Mm -hmm. Um, So one thing led to another just through like mentorship from um, like John Hillis, who is one of the founders of Creator Cabins, which is that residency program I did for a month, Mm -hmm. um, was really helpful talking to people like Rafa and Zach, who are also co-founders of of the DAO. Um, uh, and if people need to know what a DAO is, you can visit Soyo Mag. I break it down in there um, a little bit. So uh, there's going to be a lot of terms I feel like that probably need to get broken down eventually. So I'd be happy to provide you with those definitions in the future um, if needed. Uh, but basically, uh, yeah, one thing led to another talking to those people, talking to the initial people that I met with to, um, to, that to like the the core team that was like the founding members from Kernel to here talking yeah. to them I like ideating bouncing ideas figuring out how we can make this uh, more elaborate right um, and we're still working on it I mean like mm-hmm. it's I feel like this is a journey um, right because it's, right. it's everything so new um, so yeah basically the idea of non fungible zine kind of came from that and I figured out a general business sort of model um, mm-hmm. that we're still tweaking but from there. I was able to present it to like the first, to some of the other founders of the DAO, um, and it uh, and it was just really great to see the positive response because it just went to show that there was a need for this. Right. Um, I also interviewed a lot of people to see if they would be interested in something like that, and there is a lot of interest in something like that. Um, and uh, I actually uh, presented it to another DAO, which is like sort of like an, uh, a VC DAO kind of for NFT projects. Hmm, and um, I got a grant. Um, oh, very so good. That, yeah. Nice. And so we've yet to use the funds, but that's what we plan to use to like sort of pay for like gas fees, things like that once we kick off our smart contract. Um, so yeah. Non-fungible zine is essentially the the web three, um, the the new pivot into this new internet, the decentralized internet uh, model of what Soyo Magazine um, is. And it's also, I would say, like the solution to like everything I wanted for Soyo Magazine that I couldn't do on my own, right, which is right. like create an organization of other people who, um, might be like-minded or not even like-minded yeah. to come contribute and have input. And we can all collectively come together to create content and programming, um, to teach people about, um, our NFTs, uh, web three culture, things of that sort. Um, so there's a lot of really fun mechanics that we're also going to be implementing uh, that are going to allow for any holder of the NFT to- of the non-fungible zine tokens mm-hmm. um, to be able to play with. So implementing some sort of like game theory, like what happens if you either stake an NFT, burn it, hold it, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. like that. Um, which I also think is really important for anyone uh, creating NFTs is ensuring that you give your collectors like long-term value versus like just 
that one thing, especially with something as new as an NFT with so many skeptical collectors in the marketplace. Um, it's really important that we're educating people about it. And if you're going about it too, you're being intentional about what you're minting onto the blockchain. Because one of the things to consider is that it's going to live on forever on that blockchain. It's going to live right. there for as long as that blockchain exists. And um, that to me, I think is really important because we're, we're kind of a sum of of like of all of it right like mm -hmm. and it's also very network based so um we have to be super aware of like how how we're interacting with that network and um yeah so um i'm kind of like going on a tangent here but... <laughs> <laughs> and i haven't interrupted you because it's been it's been so fun to see uh you know the progression from uh you know when we left off last conversations it's almost it feels like a a little catch up where like this is all i've been doing you know all this time and it is really great you know because i see you know from what i know from you like your various passions and interests kind of coming together into this new green space, you know, your finance, finance, uh, as you mentioned, you know, interest on that and, and your expertise on that level, and then the art and the community aspect and uh, entrepreneurial practices. So it all kind of seems to, you know, just looking at you, you know, you can, you can talk about this forever, right? Because, and that's, I think, shows that, uh, you know, your excitement for it. And something that I have found in this space, as I started kind of also getting, getting into this and talking to people and interviewing is, uh, there's a lot of green, this is a green space still, you know, it's like, we just landed in the moon kind of thing, even though it has been around for a while, but it's still kind of as a being more accessible to larger audiences and being more talked about you know, quite recently. And, uh, you know, as more people come into the space, uh, it's still green. And even people who have been there for a while, they say, you know, we're still, we're all still learning, right? Uh, I was listening to, I can't remember who this was a couple of days ago on uh, Twitter. It's like, you know, I've been here for a long time, been very successful, but uh, I still feel that uh, I don't consider myself an expert, you know, because we are still, much is changing and much is growing and so many new people coming with brand new ideas and, uh, so that's kind of what's finding fascinating. And, and I think, you know, I, I was at one point kind of like in the same place as you were like, oh, you know, it's just a JPEG who's going to get a JPEG, you know, it, all these kind of like quick initial notions because we hear from second hand, third hand right. uh, and, and, you know, the things that make the headlines, but the things that make the headlines, you know, they're, they're headlines because that's what they're made for, you know, and that's a business in itself. But when you go dive deep into it and then you start finding the actual people who are in and you know, people like you and other many creatives who are in it, uh, doing really amazing things. And, uh, it's been really fascinating. I've been mean, also meeting a lot of artists who are also doing things with, uh, you know, through the NFT space in order to help, uh, you know, people and to help communities and to, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, have also a, a social, great social impact, you know, through what they're doing. So there's all kinds of crazy, really interesting, you know, things happening in this world uh, of the NFT. And I think for anyone who's right now, maybe listen, listening to this conversation and hearing you talking about it, you know, looking at your enthusiasm and hopefully mine too, as I get more into it, you know, they want to start to learn more about it versus just putting a check mark. Well, it's just this or yeah. it's just that. But I think there's much more to it. If we think. I will also say that, um, so like you said, this, like the NFT technology has technically been around since 2018. That's when the ERC 721 standard was created, mm -hmm. which is the Ethereum request for comment um, standard that actually created the, the, the technicality that is the non-fungible token. Um, and it's an evolution of what the ERC-20 is, which are what was happening back in those days, which are like the ICOs, those like crypto coins that were being released. Um, so those were fungible tokens, right? And then the ERC-721 are the non-fungible tokens. And the biggest difference between that is that a fungible token is just transactable, interchangeable. It could be like a dollar bill, like a dollar bill is like any other dollar bill, right? 
But um, this piece of art, it's not like the Mona Lisa, for example, um, they're not interchangeable. So that makes the, that there's no fungibility there, therefore non-fungible. Um, also, fun fact, I do have an ERC721 token on my <laughs> <laughs> because I am NFT mommy now these days, and uh, <laughs> I am bullish on NFTs. <laughs> now, something that I also wanted to ask you, because you also, as you started participating in this page, you also became a collector of nfts yeah do you remember your first piece that you purchased uh you know not necessarily what it was but like you know which piece it was but like what it was for you to buy you know your first nft art yeah so um actually with with the prior statement what i was going to mention is that so I want to say if like any artists out there listening and watching, like the only reason that NFTs have gotten the hype that they've gotten to this day is because of creators. It's because of artists. It's mm -hmm. because of the culture coming into the space. So, um, and just like everything else, like things don't make waves unless there's like culture behind it. There's like big, there's disruptors, right? So any artist out there needs to come into the space <laughs> because you guys are the ones creating the culture. Um, so yeah um and hence what attracted me is like i'm also a collector of physical art um and now digital art um and actually the first project i discovered was the board ape yacht club i didn't buy it because i couldn't afford it but board ape yacht club i discovered pretty early on i was like oh wow all these monkey or these apes <laughs> are like really getting along and like there seems to be a community here and i was like i want to be a part of a community you know I've, the pandemic was like really forcing us to make online connections but i was like but i want like a really i want like a crew of people who like gets it you know and i felt like that that was the board ape yacht club um but because i was like priced out i think it was like back in march and it wasn't even that high honestly like i buy nfts for that much now i wish i would have done it <laughs> um but um, I was looking for other projects that were similar. And then there was this like project that came to my radar called uh, Panda Golf Squad, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually ended up buying a few and it turns out that it was actually a rug. And if you don't know what a rug is um, in the NFT space, it's when someone tries to sell you something and it gives you like unicorns and butterflies and roses. It sounds great, but then oh, no. <laughs> they disappear and they don't follow through with, with what they promised. Oh, um, okay. So uh, the project ended up getting rugged. Like I still have those tokens, mm -hmm. um, but the, the Discord got deleted. Their like oh. website got taken down. Everybody and, <laughs> <laughs> it, it just disappeared. They basically, they, I think they only made like 40 Ethereum, but that's still a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and they just disappeared, um, which is pretty sad because there's actually a greater opportunity to mm -hmm. stay alive and nurture your community and make more money, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's really unfortunate that they did that. Um, but it taught me a lesson. It just taught me to do more research. It taught me to like be cautious of anonymous individuals on the internet um, mm -hmm. as well, because everyone can tell you there's someone, but if they're not, or they're not right. going to follow through on this idea, then, Hey, like, um, you, you need to be careful because, um, it is a, it is a trustless environment, mm -hmm. but I do believe that there are aspects of it that still need to incorporate some form of trust, especially if there's funds on the line, right? Like right. I went into the space, like with some money knowing I was like, I could lose it tomorrow and I don't care. This is mm -hmm. just education right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's how most people should start is like start small enough to learn and be ready to lose it all. Um, but I have also was fortunate enough to like sell, um, a, for my first NFT and like buy into other things and also doing a little bit of research about DeFi, uh, because of my experience at the residency. So I was able to like stake some funds and then, um, also flip some NFTs after buying some more, like I got into like the world of women project. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I sold a couple of those NFTs and that's when I was like, okay, I need to quit my job. And so actually I, um, that day I decided to quit my job. I got a text from someone that like, so you did. Yeah, I did quit my wow. job. That I is got awesome. another job. <laughs> <laughs> that is super cool. That's exciting. 
<laughs> yeah, but this one's in like the Web3 space. So um, okay. it was more aligned with like what I'm good at. And yeah, uh, yeah. And where, in, the, in the direction that you are actually going to. So exactly. Yeah. Um, so Panda Golf Squad, complete rug. <laughs> Still letting the list. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that happens everywhere. You know, thing, things like that happen, uh, you know, can happen everywhere. And that one has to be cautious about those things uh, as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think there's everywhere there's there's people of all kinds. <laughs> there are people of yeah. all kinds. <laughs> totally. So, uh, Stephanie, kind of last question. I know we could talk about this for a long time, but I, I know uh, you know you probably want to continue <laughs> enjoying your visit to Mexico. And uh, I want to ask you this: So, as we go into 2022, right? We are kind of starting a brand new year, and it's kind of exciting too. Uh, what makes you excited, you know, to be jumping into 2022 as we talk about these things? You know, the Soyo Magazine or the NFT space. Probably this, that's a, that's a big question, probably with a lot of answers, but like, what's kind of one of what top of the mind that really feels you excited as you walk into the new year? Yeah. So, uh, there's three things I'm really excited for. Excellent. Um, the number one thing is that we're going to be releasing our Genesis token for non-fungible zine. Um, so stay on the lookout for that. And this Genesis token is going to be like a founder's token, and it's going to give you very special privileges within our community. Um, another thing is, uh, well, I'm going to be traveling a lot. So I'm really excited to be traveling to all these conferences coming up. Um, I work for a development platform called Reach. So if there are any web two developers, any internet developers that know JavaScript, mm -hmm. reach out to me. I can help you get into blockchain. Nice. Um, <laughs> and the third thing is I'm thinking about moving to Mexico next year towards the end. So oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually this year, you know, by the time we uh, this episode goes live. Right. Yeah. 2022 begin of 2022. That's exciting. Well, you know, we live in a world now that everything is interconnected. You know, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, as long as you have internet, that's pretty much it. Exactly. You know, the, uh, in order to conduct our business to the things that we need to do in the world today. And we can travel, you know, hopefully <laughs> the pandemic starts to let, let us do more of that more soon. Okay. And, um, you know, the, the, there are no limitations anymore on where we are at and uh, we can actually be in different places, you know, through different times of the year, which also, uh, it, it's great. So, well, Stephanie, I want to say congratulations on everything that you're doing. I will continue to follow everything that you do, uh, because I find it to be very exciting and, uh, you know, it makes me so happy, uh, to see you excited and to see you shining, uh, you know, in your best as you, uh, you know, as you continue in this journey, uh, have to, uh, now I'll go visit you somewhere where next time we go somewhere. <laughs> I'll see where you're at. Yeah, and, let's find each other. Maybe in else. Mexico. Yeah, I got to go. I got to go back to Mexico and connect uh, there when you move. So it will be really fun. Uh, thanks for visiting us here. And uh, thank you for being a good friend to my community as well. So probably your friends will want to know where can they find you on social media? Where can they follow you and also uh, on the NFT space? Yeah. So uh, for NFTs, if you're looking to get into that space, I recommend getting to understand Discord, which is an application that's constantly used by gamers, uh, but also now where NFT communities are being harbored. Um, if you want to know what Discords I'm in, you can find me on Twitter, which is also a very heavily used um, social media platform for the NFT folk. Um, I am NFT Mommy. So that's like NFT, like non fungible token, and Mommy, M A M I. Um, and then you can also reach out to me on Instagram. I do post some stuff about NFTs there, but that's more of a personal. Um, page and that is thug life and that's t-h-u-g-l-i-f-3 um i'm always happy to teach people about nfts my goal is to onboard a million creators to nfts um so let's make it happen well i think you onboarded me already so uh <laughs> in 2022 i'm joining in so count me in <laughs> heck yeah that's so great let me know if you need help i'd be happy to like take you through show you some of the platforms available because there's a lot um yeah a lot to learn yeah. Super, a lot to learn, but it's very exciting to learn. And I found that the, the NFT community is very open to, uh, you know, to that, you know, to offer, offer advice and offer help. And 
I, I find it to be really, really exciting. So now, now I'm hooked. <laughs> awesome. And I think that's what a lot of people will experience when they start getting into it, you know, uh, with all seriousness. So thank you, Stefania, for, for your time. Thank you. uh, I'm super happy to uh, share this with my community and uh, for everyone who's listening. If you're listening to the podcast, if you're watching this through our social media, please do us a big favor. Stefania and I will be really, really happy. And if we see that you click on that little share button, it only takes one second for you to click share. You know, there might be somebody else right now kind of thinking about the NFT. What's all this? Is it for me? Is it not for me? I don't quite get it. You know, hopefully this conversation, looking at the enthusiasm, you know, of the, of the chat, you know, we'll get some more friends excited because we need more, you know, more people, positive people to come in. And as Stephanie said, right, to make the, the, the culture in this new green space. So it's up to us to what we make out of it. Right. Uh, so go and check it out. Uh, please share it with all your friends. Uh, follow us on uh, on social media. Make sure you find NFT Mami there on on uh, Twitter and connect and follow everything that Stefania is doing. So, and we're looking forward to see more of Soyo Mag very soon. So, goodbye, Stefania. <laughs>